Okay. I hope you can all hear me. It's four o'clock, so I'm going to start so we can start on time and end on time. Time and end on time. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome. I am Wendy Rex. I am Wendy yeah. Rex. I've got some output that is distracting me here, so I apologize for sounding a little bit happy. So I'm the state coordinator for so the state co Utah program, and I am very happy that we can offer this training, a brief training on using Noodle tools. Now this is a system that the teachers that I know who use it really love it and find that it's very helpful to them as they help their students track their research and create their bibliographies for their History Day projects. Um, and so instructing us today is going to be Anne Writing. She is a teacher librarian at North Davis Junior High. She's been involved with National History Day for about 14 years. So we're very happy that she is willing to share her expertise on Noodle Tools with all of us. I am going to go ahead and switch the screen over to Anne, and I'm going to mute my own microphone so that I won't make any disturbances. And then she can take it away. Okay. Okay. All right, I will get my, just want to go through the objectives for today's webinar. You know, just in case I have an administrator watching. No, not really, but <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. So Noodle Tools for NHD. Um, that's my email address if you'd like to contact me. I'll put that back up later. And so our objectives today are to learn how to sign up using the Utah subscription to Noodle Tools. That gives you the full implement, implementation of Noodle Tools. Um, anybody can sign up and have the, the little version, the, uh, I forget what they call it, but anyway, we have a subscription for every student in the state of Utah, K through college. Um, participants will also learn how to set up a teacher's Dropbox, uh, a teacher's Noodle Tools Dropbox. We have to be careful. It's called a Dropbox, but it's in Noodle Tools. And you'll also learn how to get your students signed in and connected to your teacher Noodle Tool Dropbox. So let's just go straight over to Noodle Tools now. Um, we start, there we go. We start in Utah's online library. And I've noticed that if you Google it or search for it, um, it gives you a different place to start. So this online library.uen.org is the one that's recognized at school um, to get you to inside the library for K-12. And Noodle Tools is over here in the general reference collection. While my students are getting here, oh, by the way, I need to mention that Everything in Noodle Tools works best if you're in Firefox or Chrome. If you're in Internet Explorer, some of the features don't work um, very well. So if it's starting to act up, switch over to Chrome or Firefox. Um, I'm on a Mac today, so I'll be on Chrome. Um, so Noodle Tools is part of our general reference collection. And while I have my students getting here, I always remind them if they're at home, they're going to need the username and password. I can't show it here because we're supposed to keep it within Utah and not out on the internet, but make sure that your students have that information when they go home. I also remind them that I'm silly and I check my email a lot, so if they really need me, they can email me. So you open up to Noodle Tools, and what we have been finding at North Davis is this little green box right here isn't always coming up. You have to have this little green box to make sure that you're part of the Utah Education subscription. So if it doesn't come up, what we found is that you just close it. Um, so you just close the window and then just open Noodle Tools again and it's coming on more consistently. So let me just move something out of my way here. If, your student, if you have not signed up before, you want to come here to the bottom 
and click on register. Yay, there we go. And for your students, you'll have them do I am a student or a library patron. For yourself, you want to make sure that you click on the I'm a teacher or a librarian. And also over on the left, you want to make sure it's the account link to a, a school library subscription or trial. If you are with that green box, then when you drop down, all of the K-12 schools in the state of Utah are listed right here. Um, they're alphabetical by district and then alphabetical by the school that is in the district. So come down here and I can tell you that when you are signing up students, one of the biggest problems they might have is making sure they click on the correct school. Notice that North Layton and North Davis are right next to each other. If there's any little glitches, that's the place to check. Um, one really cool thing is I had a class of teachers and even though we were at different schools we could still connect through Noodle Tools. Um, for students you would have their expected year of graduation and then for my students and my teachers I asked them to use their school login for their personal ID. For students I then asked them to also use their password for the computer to um, for Noodle Tools. So that's one less account they have to remember. And then next year when I see them again and we're doing a Noodle Tools project, I can just remind them to sign in like they sign into the computer. I've found that there's a few other librarians in my district that are doing that. So when they come to my school, they're usually ready to go. If for some reason it's not working, um, they can create, then perhaps they didn't make one, but they can create it and make sure it follows that um, follows that formula. It just makes it easier for them to remember what it is. Um, this easy login retrieval down here just it requires their initials and the last four digits of a phone number. Um, I don't have them sweat over it. Your libra the librarian of each school was given a login so they can go in and recover this information if it gets lost, which when you're in the middle of a National History Day project might be an important thing to do. But that's another reason why I ask them to please sign in just like they do on the computer. So I'm going to go back because I already have a, um, an account. So this sign in right here needs to be done once a school year so that their account, um, the accounts can be authenticated. So I'm just going to sign in as myself. This is not the first time I've signed in this school year. Um, I'm finding that everyone who already had account because there was a major update at the end of June, that sometimes um, the first time they log in, they have a couple of issues where it'll say that um, page not found or something like that, all we do is we just go back, start again, they've been authenticated and then they're into their account again. One other thing that was done this summer is they upgraded from MLA 7 to MLA 8. So if students have projects from past years, um, these are a few of my own personal projects that I've been doing. Let's see, oh, I've already opened this one. If I hadn't already opened it, it would ask me if I'd want to upgrade it. I'm just telling it yes and then it automatically upgrades it. So this is what it looks like for someone who's already created projects. When your students log in for the first time or when you log in for the first time, this will just be blank with my projects. And um, now we have inboxes right here. And only teachers and librarians have these inboxes. So as a teacher, you're going to sign in for the first time. I recommend that you make a sample project of your own, kind of look and see what it looks like on the student side. And then before you have students, you will need to click on inboxes and you need to create an inbox for the projects. For me, I do one for each of my, um, each of my classes. So I teach for library media classes. So um, to create a new inbox, you click on New Project Inbox, and Noodle Tools has given us lots of information here so that 
you can just figure out how to do it just in case you don't remember. Um, every year, you know, you have to kind of look at it, figure it out again. I teach the students and my teachers to go from the top of the box down on all of these templates that we are filling in for Noodle Tools. So the recommended um, inbox name is your student, uh, is your teacher name, um, the class that you're teaching. Um, I work with, um, I collaborate with another teacher on National History Day and put in the year that you're doing it and this actually is National History 2017. We've been teaching the students that. It's been pretty fun. Then um, you can add a title as to exactly what that project is. For me it's really important. I like to keep them separate by class period. Additional recipients. This is where I add my collaborating teacher and you can have as many collaborating teachers as you want. I don't think there is a um, limit on that. I happen to have a library Google account ID. If your district's using Google accounts, this meshes together very nicely. Um, I can modify note cards instructions. That's something advanced. And this is a really cool feature. I can add the website that my students will have access to uh, and it creates a link. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. And then I click on submit. Just a second, I have a control panel in my way. There we go, submit. And now I have this inbox. Now. I'm sorry, I can't show you any of my current inboxes because of um, student privacy. It does show their names um, when they sign in, but this inbox right here, you can well, you can see my sixth period, I have nine students that have um, shared with me. Seventh, I have seven, then I have eight and seven. That is really helpful for me as a teacher. This is how I grade their work, and this is how I can give feedback. It's awesome. So that's what the inbox is for as a teacher. So before you have your students sign in, you will want them to go to the, you'll want to create an inbox. Now I'm going to go back to a project. So, um, so we've done the teacher preparation. We have an inbox for our students to share their projects. Now I'm going to show you um, what we do after the students sign in. So they've signed in, they're in here, they're, my projects may have some projects from um, years previous or working with other teachers. That is what's so cool about Noodle Tools. They can keep the same account all the way through college. They just have to each year go in and authenticate and let Noodle Tools know which school they're in. Um, so they have their projects and what you do is you help your student create a new project. So their project title, I have been asking them to put their own last name on their project title. I have not done that in the past and I find it really, really helps with online grading. We are using MLA and for National History Day I recommend you use Junior that gives them all of, of the options that they might be using. If you want to start out with starter, if you have elementary students, that's fine. You can always change to junior or if one of your juniors needs the advanced, these things can be changed. And if for some reason they accidentally set up the wrong citation style or the wrong citation level, that can always be changed. So I'm going to click Submit. And notice I've gone from my projects over to the dashboard. Now I love this dashboard. It really works with National History Day. The first thing before you even have them start their research is they've already hopefully chosen a topic and a research question. Maybe not. Maybe they need to do a little research, but this can change. So when they're researching, they need to have a research question. And um, that's the first part of putting in the project. So, and then we talk about this, the thesis, main claim or hypothesis. They're not ready to put that in yet. 
not until they've done a little bit of research. And then Noodle Tools keeps track of the history of this particular project. You can actually, as a teacher, click on this 30-day log of work done on the project, and you'll be able to see what that student has done. And um, papers can be done in Google Docs. We hear that they're also hopefully going to be um, aligning with Microsoft soon so that districts that use Microsoft will also be able to just have them go right from Noodle Tools, export it in to do their papers. Now, public view is not what you want to use right now. That is for a different feature of Noodle Tools, and I'll show you where you can learn more about that. Now, here is where they share with your inbox. Now, I can't demonstrate this very well because it won't let me share with my own inbox. But if you click on Share with a Project Inbox, when the student types in your name, instead of saying no record match, it will actually have their options of the ones that you have available to them. So for example, when my students um, type in my name, they will see library media, and they just select which period they are in. It does have them put in their name, um, actually, it automatically fills that in from there when they uh, registered and set up their account. And then all they have to do is click on Done, and they are connected to your inbox. This allows you to actually go in and look at their project as in teacher mode. And when you do that, you can add comments. For example, I have not put in a research question. So if I was my teacher, I could add a comment and, and remind them, remember to include your research question. And now, the next time the student logs in, they will be able to see that comment and remember, oh yes, that's right, one of the requirements is that I put in my research question. Now, see where it says links right here? When I created that inbox, I put in the link to the National History Day site. You can put in more than one link, and those links will show up right here. And that's awesome. Um, just makes it really easy, especially when they're looking for primary sources. Now, let's go ahead and go to sources. One of the ways I teach Noodle Tools is when the students come in to get set up, they either have a book on a topic they're interested in or they have an article. Sometimes the teacher will just give everyone a general article or last week I just pulled books randomly off the library shelves, gave everyone a book so they, they would be ready to create a, learn how to create a citation. Now, it's the same, this template, you start from the top down. Notice there's this green button right here, create a new citation. So you click on create a new citation, and I love this new update. It says, where is it? Is it part of a database? Is it part of a website? Is it print or in hand? Did you view it or hear it live? Is it a file, an app, or an ebook, or other? So right here, when, you, when the students have something in their hand, you don't even have to go through what each of these are. They just know, oh, it's in my hand. Is it um, a book? Is it from a magazine? I have a teacher that she has the newspapers. They could use that as well. And these are all ready. So I'm going to click on book and this reference. And then this um, template will come up. So this year, of course, our topic is about people standing for something. This isn't a particularly good person to do it, but I happen to have a book um, here by Robert Frost. He's a person. Um, any, any book is pretty good. This is where you get the chance to teach them how to do it. So the first thing is the ro role author, Robert, and the most common mistake is for them to put middle name in instead of last name. So over here, last name Frost. 
Now, if I, I would type that without a capital, notice it's got this little red bar right here. That lets them know it's not quite right. And this instruction window tells them exactly what they need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Frost. The title of the book, notice it has a red star. If the bell is going to ring pretty quick, have them put in the title and save it, and it will be ready. Well, actually, you don't even have to. Oh, you submit it, not save it. All right, so the title of this book is You Come To. Um, right here, if it's a multi-volume set, that means it's probably an encyclopedia. It's very rare that they grab something from a multi-volume set, but it's a great place to teach students how to find some good sources, let them use some print sources. Um, the publisher is Holt, and you get the rest of it. What's interesting here is the publication city if needed, it'll even tell you that you usually don't need it, leave it blank, except for some exceptions. These are already there. Um, the edition doesn't usually matter, series name. Oh, if it's part of a series, this is where they put the series name instead of up here in the multi-volume. And for National History Day, of course, here's the annotation. This annotation is completed for the bibliography near the end of their research, but remind students this is not where they keep their notes. But we do like them to put in why they selected this particular source. And what's really cool about Noodle Tools, just a second, I have to find it here, is, whoops, sorry, I'm not sure where they moved that particular feature, but there is a place in here where it tells them, helps them to understand about annotations. So that's the print. I click on Submit. Oops, I guess I probably... At least better put in a year since. And now I click submit. And here is my, my first citation. It tells me what the type is. Here's the actual citation. It tells me when it was created. And I have no note, note cards at this time. I want to show you another project so you can just kind of see how the different um, citations look on a bibliography here. So here's my dashboard. So my research question was which of Chris Crutcher's books have been banned, by whom and why, and should his books be available in our library? We, uh, we do um, research on authors to learn how to do research. So here are the sources that I've had the opportunity to look at. Um, there's a magazine, and actually right now my note cards are showing. Let me show, close it. So I have a magazine, an online database, um, photos, newspaper, website, magazine, and a journal. And you can look right here. There's an analysis that your students could use and you can use as a teacher. I have nine total citations. I have done five note cards. I'll show you that in just a moment. It shows that there's one print, three web, and five database. Shows you what types. And then um, down here it gives how old things are. And this really helps our students kind of understand how to balance out their research. Now, really quickly, I want to show you how these note cards work. So I'm going to go back to my sample project. that I called writing. Yep, that was not very good. Let me show you how the quickest way to have students create note cards. First of all, have them first do their citation, and then over here under note cards it says new. This is the quickest, easiest way for them to create their note card. So you click on new, and here is the note card. This is brand new, they've done um, some really cool things. First of all, this template fits on uh, a tablet or a smaller device. So Noodle Tools is device compatible now. Um, it tells them exactly what to do here. It tells, uh, the reason I like them to create note cards from a source is it already has the source connected. If it, and 
um, the title would be the main idea of the note card. They can copy and paste things right here if it happens to be from the web. Here's the URL. One of the first things I tell them if they're working on the web is to grab that URL, put it here, because it allows them to go right back to the page where they were working. And then over here, so we've got copy and paste here. And over here, they have in the right hand, they can put it in their own words. And then down in the bottom, it's their ideas, their original thinking. And these are some very valuable things to use. In fact, you can use this for any type of research or even for some small projects. Um, our time is getting a little short. There's a hidden feature I need to make sure that you all know. Under my account, there's a little place called Help. If you click on Help, you get lots of information. Noodle Tools has created tutorials and um, these are really short, quick guides. There's one for students, there's one for teachers. How to work with projects. It will show you how you work with that, um, that Dropbox with your students and teach them how to use it. So they've got these great tutorials. I want to make sure that you knew where they, knew where they were. And these are updated to the new version. Now, while, I while I'm sharing my screen, I can't see if anybody's asking questions. So give me just a second, and I want to look over and see. Oops, it's not going to let me do that. I guess I have to quit showing my screen to be able to see if we have. Nope, we don't have any. Oh, here we go. Sorry, this is my first time to do this. It's pretty fun. I don't see that we have any questions. Does, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, let me see if I've covered all of my objectives. I think we have. I hope I've convinced you that this is a tool that you can use with your classroom. Uh, it, this tool has been available in Utah for about three years now. I can tell you that it's the easiest one I've used with students, but every once in a while when they don't quite do as well as I'd like them to. Sometimes I threaten to make them go back and do it the old-fashioned way so that they will appreciate it. Um, if there aren't any questions, there's a couple of other things I'd like to show you in, in just um, the last couple of minutes. Under these projects, let me just go to this big one that I have. So this is my dashboard. I can go, here's my sources. And it allows me to put which of these are primary or secondary by selecting them. Let's see here. Do I have any primary? These are uh, biographies. Well, let's just go ahead and this is a, this is a secondary. I'll just show you how you do it. So you check on some of these, and then down here at the very bottom it says select, select an attribute. I can put that these are secondary sources, and I can apply it. Let me just, um, oh, and then let me select this photo or image. I'm going to make that just primary so that I can show you what it does. Right here it shows secondary, and this is primary, which is something we do. Um, it would be best if I sorted them all, but I'm not going to take this time. So right now they're sorted alphabetically for my bibliography. Up here under the sort, I can change it to primary, secondary. And then right here it says print or export. I can send it out to Word or to Google Docs or to any other word processor. And then I'm able to... Uh, change the title or whatever. Let's. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen on my laptop with Word, but let's find out. And it guarantees it's virus-free. I think it's right there. Let's see if it'll open up for me. Open. Yay! 
And then if they make any additions or edits, they can re-export it. And it's a really quick way, a quick and easy way to not worry about the details of typing and punctuation and worry about the works cited part. I have them change this to annotated bibliography if it is annotated. But notice it goes to primary and secondary, just like National History Day would like them to do that. I'm noticing that it's 4.30, so we're just about out of time. Um, let me go back to PowerPoint really quick and show you. Whoops, that is not how it con that's not how it works. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, there's all kinds of stuff when you are doing this. Here we go. Just wanted to show you the, my contact information one more time. And if you have any questions, be sure and contact me. Also, Noodle Tools is ex exceptionally um, responsive. If you need any help, they'll be happy to. They respond very quickly within a day if you need any help. And hopefully, you'll have a great experience with this. So thanks so much for attending. I'm going to turn this back over to Wendy. Okay. Am I am I the presenter now? Let's see. I think you have to change over the presenter. Oh, there's change presenter. All right, I can do it. Oh, I can probably do it. There you go. Yep, I did it. Now you are the presenter. Okay. All right. Uh, and thank you so much. That was for me, who has not attempted Noodle Tools yet. That was tremendously helpful. Um, there is only one thing I wanted to add because we are going to we are recording this webinar, and I will post it so that people can watch it at their convenience. But um, let's see. There we go. If you are not a teacher that has access to the teacher tools in through um, Utah's online library, which is how this subscription for teachers is funded. National History Day also has a subscription with Noodle Tools. So say, for example, you might be a homeschool parent or somebody like that. You can still access Noodle Tools and you would do it through National History Day. So if that's something that interests anybody or would apply to them, that option is there. And so I think that makes this, this um, program kind of universally available to uh, History Day students throughout our state, which is really great. Um, we're all done. Thanks for attending. If you have questions about using Noodle Tools, Anne has said she's totally happy to help people. If you have questions about History Day in Utah, I'm happy to help as well. So please get in touch. Thanks, everybody. Good night.